Well, it's 3.30 on the 7th of April, and that means there are exactly 210 days before we deposit Donald J. Trump on the ash heap of history where he belongs. And I don't think there's any question but that Donald did a fabulous job today of showing why he belongs on the ash heap of history. He did just terrific work. He showed himself to be exactly who he really is. A very sick person in a very high office and in a very dangerous place for the United States of America. But we do only have 210 days left and an election coming up at that point. So I will think that we're going to make it. William Kalish, it is so nice to see you here today, as every day. So good to see you. Ira's here. Alfred's here. And Alfred, Alfred Montgomery, the next sheriff of the city of St. Louis. Very exciting. So we look forward to what you're going to be doing, Alfred. And I do have a guest. And here he is. And I believe that this is John. Am I correct? Yes, it is. John Ogilvy, how are you? Fantastic, sir. And yourself? I'm fine. So, you know, the name of this program, John, is Something's Happening. And I assure you, something's always happening. That is definite. And that's a little bit of how we got the name, but not exactly, but close enough. So tell me about you, John. You're you're involved in global trade, I understand. Tell me. Correct. I've uh, been in the industry, international logistics, for over 25 years. Um, combination of uh, small package, international specialist, and uh, uh, last you know, 15 in the uh, freight industry, containerized freight, air freight, um, customs brokerage. Uh, just really getting in touch with importers, exporters, and, and helping to be the uh, the middleman in between those transactions and to facilitate that trade. Okay. And what's the name of your company? I was OEC Group. Yep. And and We're how long have they been around? Based, uh, since uh, eighty one. Okay. Started so as a uh, less than con- uh, less than full container consolidator, and then. Uh, Expanded since then, and we're one of the top five um, Asia Pacific uh, freight forwarders in the market. Okay, so from your standpoint, from the way you see things, do you think that the United States is on the right course in terms of expanding global trade? Oh, I am not a huge fan of protectionism. I would love to see more manufacturing back in the U.S. We've lost a lot of uh, we've lost a lot of good jobs and opportunities here. Um, you know, a lot of that is uh, due to automation. Um, the well, something may have needed to be done in terms of tariffs. I think the uh, I, I guess maybe when when you go into a traditional war. The element of surprise is, is okay, right? That, that can work to your advantage. I think in this situation, when we've gone into a trade war, there's going to be some, some economic losses. Um, it was, uh, I think it was enacted pretty quickly, and it didn't allow businesses that had developed relationships and purchasing patterns for years and years to, uh, to make that change as quickly as, uh, as tariffs went into play. So, so let me ask you this: do, do you think? I mean, there are two possible ways to to engage in in global uh, trade. The way I see it, uh, one would be uh, to protect ourselves and to uh, to try to take advantage of uh, every relationship that we can in the world to do better, or uh, to engage with the rest of the world in a way in which maybe both sides have the opportunity to win. Do, does that sound like the two possibilities? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. 
hundred percent agree with you there. So, so what? I mean, obviously, we've taken the first course. Uh, is there any way to get back on the other course? Uh, you know, if this was these were largely enacted by the current administration, um, uh, not to say that some things didn't need to be addressed in terms of overall trade policy, but uh, yeah, it's, it's to say that there's no going back. Um, that's to say that you know we would never find ourselves in a pandemic. Yeah. You know. <laughs> right as well too right right so never say, right. never say never right um ideally uh no i i i believe in a free flow of trade um certain geographic regions have you know have competitive advantages you either have access to raw materials um labor technology uh etc so no to 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 go back from being a uh a very um, interconnected global trade, I, I, I don't think that's the way forward. Or okay. not, not the way forward. Okay. How about uh, the worker? What do you think? Uh, can we help workers? In terms of manufacturing in the U.S. or just in... in well, first of all, do you, I mean, I, so I'll tell you where I am. I mean, I, I don't think manufacturing is ever coming back anything like what we ever had. Um, so what, what could we do instead of that? Hey. Yeah, you know, we've, we've transitioned to a service-based economy. Um, the, uh, you know, I, outside of training and education, um, probably the primary, right, identifying those markets that, you know, will be available once we get out of, uh, out of the virus situation. Um, what will be strong? What uh, what niche can we fill? I, I don't have the answers to the specifics on that, but um, uh, boy, if I boy, if I did, right? Yep. Well, tell me this: what, Do you do a lot of business or any business with China? Yes. Yeah, primarily. Okay, so so a lot. Okay, oh. and 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 do you feel that we are helped or hurt by our relationship with China? Generally, I don't think the relationship obviously is strained right now. Um, the uh, the tariffs didn't help, and then certainly now the uh, situation with the virus is is putting an additional strain on that. Um, we certainly import more than uh, buy more from uh, from them than vice versa, but. Uh, and that, that puts us in a little bit of a you know, stronger position. But in terms of the relationship improving, uh, does that happen if we have a, a, an administration change? Um, does a light bulb finally go off? Uh, we realize that now we all have to work together, but with you know, maybe some new ground rules on how we conduct trade, how we conduct uh, you know, protect international uh, IP rights. Yeah. So, first of all, would you say uh, you you mentioned uh, the obvious, which is the the relationship is strained? Uh, how upset do you think they are with us on a scale of one to ten? Oh, when you say they, at the broad China stroke. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I don't think that there's enough. You know, maybe from the administration standpoint. Sure. But in terms of the, uh, I, I wouldn't really want to want to guess how they feel. I think that um, you know, we're usually in, in any any position where you get two sides, the other side always feels that they're hundred percent right. Okay. Fair to say, right? Yeah, yeah. I I get what you're saying. Yeah. Sure. So they think they yeah, think average, they think they're right. The, yeah. 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 Okay. The average worker in factory there, they they they're concerned about you know they they had a job they went uh, they went off to, um, to to visit their their home cities and visit family and friends for Chinese New Year and didn't come back. Gotcha. And now the ones that were able to come back are um, uh, are, are back home and and the jobs just are not going to be there. So uh, we're we're getting into the same you know, similar situation. 
sure, but hopefully, hopefully, you know, the economy uh, rebounds here and we get uh, we get trade flowing again. We get uh, we get some spending happening, and that should uh, hopefully jumpstart the economy once we get through the, the virus. Okay, so John Ogilvie from OEC, and and is your headquarters here in St. Louis? Uh, so we have an office in St. Louis here. Um, our uh, corporate headquarters is in Taipei. Um, U.S. headquarters in New York, and then offices all throughout throughout Asia, U.S., Europe. Okay, so let me ask you this: uh, you got. You let's say you're in front of uh, a crowd of people, uh, something you want to tell them. Uh, what is it that that's most important on your mind that you would like to tell people? So I think right now the the big concern with them uh, is the PPD, personal protective equipment, masks, and, and the need for everyone to uh, um, to be aware that they need to. The self isolation, and then you know, how do they get these masks? So that's one of the biggest questions that a lot of our customers have been asking right now. Is they're either wanting to, they're either shifting their business model because they don't know that their commodity is going to be selling. Let's say someone sells to uh, uh, to the restaurant industry, their their business is going to be significantly changed um, when we come out of uh, their stay at home orders. Right, um, a lot of those restaurants are going to be not opening back up. Correct. So a lot of them have shifted their models and they've gone to, you know, they're looking at importing, um, uh, whether it's purchasing new factories, whether it's getting agreements with a lot of these uh, manufacturers to import masks, uh, gloves, gowns, all the PPE equipment. So it's not a, um, uh, besides the urgency for everybody to shelter at home, that was on an FDA call yesterday and they spoke about um, bringing in these these products so the FDA has relaxed a lot of those regulations for masks um, depending on what the end use is and who you're if you're bringing in for your own company uh, to distribute to your employees to stay safe while they're they're at home and at work um, or whether it's uh, even bringing them in and donating them to local hospitals and charities so, is this it, equipment coming in fast enough, John? It it's not, but but that's one of the reasons that, that the FDA has re they've relaxed the the typical registration and licensing restrictions for some of these products. So they have brought them in. Um, it, there are a lot coming in. Uh, one of the challenges that, that typically you have is coming. You know, these are products that come in ocean freight, and there's a, a stockpile of them. Because the shutdown of you know the passenger aircraft um, and not a lot of passengers in, approximately 50, 55 percent of the total air cargo throughout the globe moved on passenger aircraft belly space. So we've eliminated that that air freight space throughout the world. So not only do you have companies that are dealing in just in time inventories that, that rely on air freight, now you've got a huge priority on on these these PPE products to get in. So um, they have re- relaxed them, so we should see a, uh, an increase in, in the availability of them so that when somebody goes personally to go to uh, to Walgreens or um, any of the drugstores or whatever, that hopefully they see a replenishment of, the, of those on the shelf so they can, they can do the needful. Okay, listen, John, I appreciate your time, and uh, we wish you lots of good luck. And uh, do lots of great business. And uh, John Thanks, Ogilvie Mark. from OEC, we thank you. All right, and anybody can, if have any questions, they can reach me. They can go to the website at oecgroup.com and uh, um, they can reach me in the St. Louis office. oecgroup.com in the St. Louis office. And again, John, thank you so much. Mark, appreciate it. You take care. You bet.